Because I'm just trying to understand what understanding you have of Islam. Um, well, you have to give your life to Allah, right? Yeah. Give your life to Allah. What does that mean? That you have to pray five times a day, you have to cover your head, yeah. cover your arms. Okay. Now, it's like covering up the dress code, yeah? Which, mashallah, the sisters doing a beautiful example of, yeah? There's levels, there's stages. The fundamental, even you saying praying five times a day, there's something that comes even before that, which is the belief in Allah. Once you have the belief in Allah, you will notice that, look, you're inclined to do these things. You want to connect with Allah five times a day. You want to follow the dress code that's legislated by God. Yeah? So now, let's um, water and support and facilitate and build upon this connection with God. Yeah? So, do you believe in God? I don't know. So now, that is an important question. So, let's, let's look if there's strong reasons to believe in God. Okay? So, you're not sure if you believe in God right now, yeah? Yeah. Okay, thank you for your honesty, right? Of course. The way I address that statement is by asking, where did the universe come from? I, I don't have an answer to that question, I'm sorry. Yeah? I don't know the answer. <coughs> do you not think it's important? Yeah, I do. Because right now, um, through our limited interaction, I can see that you've got a good head on your shoulder. You're a smart person, right? You spend time learning, educating yourself. You've probably gone quite far in the education system. But you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, she has no agreeing. I'm totally agreeing, yeah. yeah. But you haven't invested in thinking to yourself like, what created this? Where did this come from? What's my purpose in life? Yeah. Is there a purpose in life? Where am I going to go? Yeah, you tell me that all the time. Of course, time. yeah. I try and ask her that. Because that's the thing you ask, like, why haven't you become Muslim yet? And then she'll be like, oh, because I just haven't got a chance to think about that. And I'm like, where do you think the universe comes from? She's like, I don't know. Don't me yet. Like, yeah. yeah, I don't, I, yeah. I don't think so, you know how some people dig too deep into it? Like, I'm just, like, I get it, they don't, but... No, 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 because I'm getting mixed messages from you. Okay. One minute is like, there's too much commitment fully give your life next minute it's like wait you're not even sure it exists so like you need to be a bit more like, like i don't mean in a rude way yeah, i mean in the sense that the way my brain works the way i'm trying to comprehend our conversation so i would say that look the universe um all the leading scientists agree that the universe came into existence would you agree with that do you think it's finite or infinite finite means um, it's not going to last forever, it's created, and infinite means that it's going to last forever. Um, no, I don't think it's going to last forever. Yeah, so then that implies it's finite, it's, it was created. Yeah, um, and anything that's created, everything that's created uh, was put into creation. That was, it was, uh, has a creator. Has a creator. Has a beginning. Has a beginning. Yeah. yeah, has a cause. So I'm saying that that cause is Allah is something that's all-knowing, all-powerful. Because yeah. it, it didn't just put a antidote, it just put the entire universe and the cosmos and the systems in place. So, when I ask you what created the universe, where did the universe come from? Like Allah in the Quran says that, look, did you create yourself? You didn't create yourself, then there's a creator. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Uh, so, then Allah gives a full line, not then or after, but um, the Quran continues in 100, chapter 112, where it gives a four line definition of God. Yeah? Which is Allah is uniquely one. Yeah? He is self sustaining, eternal. Yeah? Um, so Allah is not in need of anything. Yeah? Allah is independent, not dependent on anything. I'll make this as a point because we're going to get back to it. Yeah? Um, he, did not, he does not have offspring, nor was he born. So Allah, by definition, is uncreated. Comparable to God. Right now, give me an example of something coming from nothing. Um, something coming from nothing? I don't know. Um, <laughs> looking around. Yeah, I'm looking around. I don't right. know. Because there isn't an example of something coming from nothing. It's more logical and rational to believe in a creator than not to believe in a creator. Yeah. I have this 
many times I speak to arrogant atheists and they're like, uh, I can calculate to, like, a, there's a, cont um, a professor of quantum mechanics. I spoke to him for 20 minutes. Like, I can calculate to the very moment. Yeah, are you studying quantum mechanics, by the way? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, because well, I'm seeing you outside. Oh, no, no, no. You're just smiling. You're just smiling at each other. Oh. Stop being happy, okay? It's not happy time. This is a conference. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, professor of quantum mechanics, and he's like really arrogant and pompous, and he's like, oh, my hypothesis and I don't have faith, I trust in this and da 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 rah, rah, rah. I can calculate the very moment the Big Bang happened. I go, that's fine. What caused the Big Bang? Give me an example of something coming from nothing. My man had this hat and he walked away. Because it was finished, you've got nothing to say. That's a good point, yeah. Yeah, from nothing comes nothing. He's, he's waffling, 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 black hole, atom i'm like what where did the atom come from yeah where's the matter the black hole come from yeah and then he went blank on his face i'm like then don't chat breeze to me you chat from arrogance and and you think like you're gonna confuse confuse me with your um, arguing from authority no you're not yeah yeah so now are you more inclined to believe in the creator than not to believe in the creator yeah, is there in fact is there a creator now after this conversation based on what i've said Man, I don't know. Like, for me, I feel like I'm only going to believe it when it's proven to me. What okay. proof do you need? That does that, that, that Allah exists. How? What do you mean how? I what's your, what's your project? I'm find a way to give you proof. I, I'm going to give you proof. Okay. Yeah? Cool. Okay. Um, Allah, by definition, is perfect. Yeah? And if Allah reveals a scripture, the scripture is going to be perfect. Have you ever read a book which is perfect? Um, I think, yeah, I've read books, I think are perfect, yeah. You've read a perfect book. I want to read this book, what's it called? It was a book that I read in high school. And it was perfect, what was perfect about it? The storyline was perfect. The character adaptation. So doing English lit? No. Yes, all right. Now, okay, now, the Quran has prophecies, gets it right, that they come true. It talks about gets it right. For example, science gets it right. Talks about history, gets it right. There's no mathematical errors. Yeah? The linguistic miracles. Yeah? Um, the preservation. Yeah, it's been perfectly preserved, which I'm going to touch upon. So, the, the message is perfect in regards to a complete way of life. Yeah? So, for me, that book is perfect. Yeah. Hence, it must be from God. It's perfectly preserved. The Prophet Muhammad, who the Quran was revealed to, spoke Arabic. The Quran is in Arabic. In a museum, in a university in Birmingham, we have a carbon dated Quran in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, which is the same book that we've got over 2 million Muslims who've memorized it, word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. So I can make the claim that, oh, we've preserved it in writing in a mu in museum in Turkey and a university in Cairo. But that secondary, primary is an oral tradition. So from God to the angel Gabriel, to the prophet Muhammad, to his disciples, and so on and so forth. How do you feel about this book? Do you not feel like it's miraculous? Do you not feel like I want to read this book? Do you not feel like I say, Ashadu no, Allah? Okay. Go on. How do you feel about what I've said so far? You know, I agree with everything you're saying. What so questions far. do you have as well? I don't have any questions so far. I just want to hear more. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank Talking. you. Yeah, I love the sound of my voice. I can continue <laughs> this. Let's That's see. Great, then, yeah. I got time. You got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's exactly. do this. Yeah. All right. So oh, sorry, I have one good question. Where is this going? Um, Sam Dawa, Dawa to the soul, unite upon the heart. Do you know any of Yes. Uh, you can. You can. Firstly. Or on YouTube recently. All on YouTube, some Facebook, some other places. Yeah, no, that's um, fine, yeah. We're flexible. And plus, how could I forget? Um, this Continuous Message Foundation as well. You can scan it. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, <clears throat> for me, my evidence and the evidence that God exists is this book, Quran. 80% mm -hmm. of it has been proven 100% correct. The other 20% is ambiguous. So you can't prove it neither right or wrong. So okay. it talks about heaven. You're not gonna, I can't tangibly, tam, tam, tangibly prove to you 
heaven exists. Yeah. Yeah, using science because science is limited by space, by time, by something that's tangible. Yeah, physically, I have to be able to test it. Um, angels, I can't grab an angel and start doing experiments and prove it to you. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> but it's a logical inference that if 80% that can be tested and proved is correct, then the ambiguous parts must be when it's talking about heaven and hell. When you put it like that, it makes you think why they're Christians and why they're like other religions. You're the reason. Because we don't have time. Yeah. Right now, <clears throat> if you, I don't know, it's rude to ask your age, but however, to whatever age you got to, you've never been bothered to pick up the holy book. I'm not saying reject, um, I'm saying look, go through the religious scriptures. You'll realize the Quran stands out. The Bible doesn't make a claim it's from God. It doesn't make a claim it's been perfectly preserved. Yeah? If anyone read the Quran, it will, it, will, it will blow their mind. But we don't have time. Why? Because we're living in a consumer-driven world. Yeah. They get us in a rat race to earn money. When you go to work, you'll be like, oh my gosh. We can't talk about politics. We can't talk about religion. We can't talk about death. Why not? Oh, it causes conflict. Fam. Manchester United fan and an Arsenal fan. I've seen Mandem have gained to a like, big argument. But yeah. I can't talk about religion in a respectful way. Yeah. No, they're brainwashing us. Do you know what I mean? Because they want us to continue this rat race, pay the taxes, don't challenge the status quo, um, spend money on be consumer driven. But then, oh, let's change the world. Does it make sense? Islam, the third pillar, zakat. You give 2.5% of your annual wealth with the only economical system that eradicate poverty. But you've never learned it, you've learned history, but you never learn about the Islamic Empire. We eradicate poverty. 1400 years ago, a man in the desert, a unlettered man, the Prophet Muhammad, said the best amongst you, the one who's the best to his wife. The Christian church was debating if women, um, if you can inherit women. The philosophers were debating, the Christian churches were debating, do women have souls? And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is saying um, they can inherit, they have rights, treat them kindly. You know what I mean? A man came to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and said, Look, Salam, I didn't like him. Okay, alhamdulillah. Um, feel free to come here, inshallah. Can I get my camera, bro? Habibi, we're just, just in front of the camera, Habibi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, a man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, Look, <coughs> who deserves my companionship? He said, Your mother. Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your father. You don't hear about this. Does it make sense? Yeah. In the final sermon of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, he said, No white man is better than a black man. No Arab is better than a non-Arab. We're talking about, it. he's saying, as an Arab, saying it to other Arabs who are very uh, nationalistic. And he's saying this, he's giving women's rights. And he's saying the only thing that differentiates you is your God consciousness, taqwa. You can't see my taqwa. I'm not wearing my taqwa. Does it make sense? what shoes I'm wearing, what watch I've got, what phone I'm carrying. These status symbols, no, in Islam, we don't care. Yeah. In Islam, what matters is what's in your heart. And that's why I said, you're talking about covering up. I didn't even, covering up isn't even one of the pillars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're talking about X, Y, and Z, devoting your life. I'm like, devote your life after you've affirmed, after you know the one you're devoting your life is worth devoting your life to, yeah. then you're going to want to. Of course, yeah. You've seen the sister before she became Muslim, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And massive dress code change, but she was always wearing <laughs> covered head to toe. Is it like, I don't want you to expose, oh, no, but I'm no. saying there's a difference in the way she's dressing yeah. her, her behavior. And why is there a difference? Because she's born and brought up in the West. Yeah. And she's chosen to leave the Western dress code and follow the dress code legislated by God. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily need to follow her example. You do your own private personal journey. I'm saying 
more importantly is get that connection with God. Get that one of get that obedience with God. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, how do you feel about what I said? Yeah, no, I I definitely agree with everything. Like everything you said has definitely made sense. Like the way you broke it down, very, I was very easy to understand everything that you were saying. Like it makes yeah, everything that you say basically makes sense. It's not my first day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Do you have any questions for me? Anything that I can't answer. Think of all things you say, oh yeah, like I'd have to ask somebody. Because I can't answer them. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Damn. It's gone on your head now, isn't yeah, it? No, yeah. Yeah. no, 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 even that. Think about it like this. Rely on your thinking, like, look, by the end of this conversation, I'm going to be honest with you, my intention is I want you to leave as a Muslim, someone who's guaranteed paradise, someone who's going to enter paradise. And I'm going to answer you, sister, what's stopping you from becoming a Muslim? So think, what is stopping you from becoming a Muslim? Because you believe in God, um, you've seen your immediate close friend who grabbed you by the elbow and brought you here, um, have a positive change. Um, right now, you know the one who created us, the one that created the universe, should we not obey that creator? Or should we um, obey our manager? Obey, um, like what? Where, 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 where should we give our main priority? Like, it's good to maintain this kind of routine of going to work, listening to your school teacher. Does it make sense? Yeah. When your when your professor says you need to hand in your assignment on this day on this time, you do it. Yeah. You've done your all nighters. You know the energy drinks. Yeah. Yeah and you're binging on it just to get that assignment done. Why? Because the professor said so. But then the one who's created you and given you all these blessings. Just a few moments ago, I was speaking to an atheist and I was saying that, look, um, like she was giving a lot of emphasis to money. And I said that, look, okay, I'm gonna give you five million pounds. All I want is two of your eyes. She said, no. I said to her, look, you give me the amount you want for your eyes. She goes, no, it's priceless. Yeah. How much do you have which is priceless? Your ability to bring, blink, your ability to breathe. I was crying like a baby a few weeks, a few months ago. I was ill. One of my nostrils wasn't working. It was blocked. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel unwell and all this kind of stuff. And these are things we take for granted. Yeah. I know one brother who was doing his bicycle and cut the tip of his finger off. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know how much his life's changed? It's, like, it's just weird of gripping course. stuff and stuff like that. It's important. To, Allah's yeah. designed us in a perfect way. Does it make sense? Look at the thumb. If we didn't wasn't able, if we didn't have a thumb, how would our life be different? Yeah. Don't judge my dry hands. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there. Um, so I'm saying all these blessings God has given you, but yet you're not willing to submit to the Creator. God's giving you the signs, the Quran, yet you're not willing to make a bit of time to read it. Does it make sense? Because that guidance in the Quran is good. Yeah? Follow it, bring it into your life. More importantly, the belief. I'm going to make a few statements and you tell me if you disagree with me. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm getting jealous. Less cameras are facing me, but let's not go there, yeah? I will be like, right now, God is one. Say it loud, do you say it proudly? Oh, you want me to repeat after No, you? no, no, I'm saying, do, do you affirm it, do you agree? Oh, yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. Yeah, God is one. God deserves to be worshipped. Yeah, I agree. Think about it, no, no, there's no pressure, because if, you if you're like, I'm not sure, I'll convince you. Okay, you know, I agree with you, yeah. Yeah? Um, God deserves to be obeyed. I agree. Yeah? God created us for a reason. Yeah, I agree. God would communicate that reason to us. I agree. Okay, thank you. Okay. So God created us purposelessly. No, no. Create us a perp with you said God created us with a purpose. I oh, you're not sure? I, I agree to an extent. Okay, yeah. Because I feel like not everyone can find their what if you don't find your purpose in life? Okay. This is a Western notion. Yeah? Your purpose in life, what if you don't find it? Like 
you, what, if, what if you don't find it? I'm, I'm, giving, you, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you your purpose in life. You're not accepting it. Your purpose in life is to worship the Creator alone. And through that submission to God, you're going to get happiness. If you live your life the way you want to live, you're not going to be happy. You're going to have short-term happiness. Yeah? Fair I met one brother, he had tattoos and he's telling me about um, he used to bartend in Spain and how happy his life was. I would be loved. Uh, my apologies, like he's, he was sleeping around X, Y and Z, right? And I go, alright. If you're so happy, why are you in this country? He goes, uh, then there was drugs and this, that. So I go, don't, don't lie to me, my bro. I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're talking to me like that hedonistic life that made you happy. It gave you short-term happiness and you left it. Sleeping around with different women, getting drunk, drinking alcohol and taking drugs. It didn't make you happy, that's why you left that lifestyle. So I'm saying, who knows you better than you know yourself? The Creator. And if the, in the Quran, there's nothing which is good for you which is forbidden. Wait, sorry, say that again? There's nothing which is good for you which is forbidden. There's nothing which is good for you which Allah said you can't do it. Everything which is forbidden for you, it makes sense, there's a good reason for it. For long-term happiness. For long-term happiness, we follow the Creator. Now, Allah is all-knowing, all-power, created us for a reason, told us what that reason is, it, what that reason is through prophets and messengers. Men chosen amongst men to articulate and express the guidance from God. Once they die, and these men are the Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet Jesus, the Prophet Moses, the Prophet Abraham, Adam, Noah, David, and all the prophets in between, yeah, they came with a perfect guidance. Once they die, and the guidance changes or gets corrupted, yeah, the message lives on through a perfect book, which I'm claiming is the Quran. A lot of Muslims, we talk about the Prophet Muhammad and we put a lot of emphasis there because there's no more prophets to come. He's the seal of the prophets and the religion is complete now. Jesus, you was brought up in a Christian family? No, I was brought up with no religion. No religion, all right. Uh, from the little you may know about Jesus Christ, he never got married. He never done business transactions. He doesn't, he can't tell you how to treat your wife, how to raise your children, how to conquer lands, how to, how to lead an army. Yeah. Islam goes from um, how to lead a, lead a state, how to treat your um, spouse, how to raise your children, how to cut your nails, how to wash yourself in the bathroom. Like, oh no, I always emphasize this. Like, I'm proud to say it. My religion is complete to the point that I know how to cl be cleansy. Yeah, that's so good, yeah. Does it make sense? That's great. And I'm saying, SubhanAllah, God, Allah Almighty has actually legislated and articulated to us how to clean ourselves. Because yeah. He's not, he's not going to let us leave us to it because Allah wants good for us. God wants good for us. I keep using the word Allah. What does Allah mean? Allah means the one worthy of worship. Allah is the Arabic term where you can't put an S to make it gender, goddess. No, you can't add an S to make it prove gods, Allah's. Allah is singular and is separate from his creation. He's different, he's not comparable to his creation. We worship the creator, not the creation. I made a video and I made a mistake, so I'm gonna emphasize. We worship the creator, not the creation. So now, I was talking about the prophets and revelation. God created us, would God not articulate to us how to live, what to do, what not to do? And I'm saying God articulated that through the Prophet Muhammad, his life has been preserved. His statements have been produced in hadiths. Yeah, we have an entire science behind how we've preserved and authenticated. Um, the, the individual heard the Prophet say, was he trustworthy? Was he there? Is he honest? Does he have a good memory? And so on and so forth. So I have these different criteria and was able to preserve how to live, what to do, what not to do. So now, going back to my question, would you think that God would communicate to us how to live now that I've, I've yeah. articulated what I've said? Because yeah. with all due respect, all the major religions agree upon this point. Jesus came with this guidance, Moses came with this guidance, Prophet's come. 
was that you're taking a Shahada? Is that true? No, not yet. No, no, no. maybe somewhere else. Soon. I like what the sister said, not yet. <laughs> um, yeah, no pressure, I'm only joking, but yeah, yeah, wh wh whatever you're ready for, yeah. does that make sense? And I'm confident that um, we'll, we'll see where the conversation course, takes yeah. us here. Because sometimes my jokes and like, I don't want to like pressure you unnecessarily. No, 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 no. Yeah. yeah, don't worry. Yeah. I will have a question for you when, whenever you're... Um, let me just finish. Are you going to remember the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course I will remember it, don't worry. In fact, ask. Go on, <laughs> she must forget it. No, I won't. Okay, it's cool, whatever. Um, I was going to say, would you say that it's better to die a really bad Muslim than to die not a Muslim at all? <coughs> the question is a very good question. And the fact of the matter is, as a believer who's testified that there's only one God, that's worthy of worship, right? That will get you the keys to paradise. That means, as a Muslim, sooner or later you enter paradise. Yeah? Because um, that belief is somewhere in your heart. Yeah? And that belief is what enters you into paradise. Now, imagine um, you've done a lot of wrong things. Then at least you're going to enter paradise. There's still going to be like um, punishment or judgment where God is going to decide. God could choose to forgive you without punishment or you might have to you've wronged people and then there's going to be like um, things that are going through judgment and so on and so forth now imagine there's someone who doesn't believe in islam yeah and they're really good that they give charity and they do this and they yeah. do that i mean just are they really good though because if you're going and disobeying the one who created you then how do you know what good is You're like, I'm you're, just you're, think, <laughs> I'm just thinking about what you said, don't worry. Yeah. No, you're going to say, no, I'm a good person. No, say I'm it. not, I'm a good person. But, no, I'm an alright person, but I wouldn't say I'm a great person, no. Yeah. Now, how do we know how to be good? Because the thing is, it's societal. Like, different societies have a different concept, it's subjective. Yeah. And I'm saying, the objective judge, the decider is Allah. Yeah. So, I would argue, we can't be good, we can't, um, we don't deserve paradise if we don't have that foundation to build on that we believe and we worship Allah. Because that belief in Allah, worshipping Allah, submission to Allah, following Allah, obeying Allah, yeah. that makes us good people. Yeah? Did I answer your question? Yeah, you did, definitely. Yeah? What was your question? Just remind me. <laughs> My question was, is it, would you say it's better to die a really bad Muslim than to die not being a Muslim at all? Like the worst yeah. non-believer than, yeah, that was a, yeah, like the worst non-believer. Yeah, because I put a spin on it and yeah, the fact of the matter is... Case it really, and it did, so it's perfect. The, the, the simple answer is yes, because as the worst believer, you're still guaranteed paradise. And it's not me saying it, it's revealed to the man chosen by God through the scripture revealed by God. How do you feel about my answer? Yeah, no, your answer makes perfect sense. Yeah, no. Yeah? So, based on that, because you agree with all the fundamentals. Yeah? Uh, you've got, you've agreed with everything that you need to be a person of paradise. Yeah? So now, I'm going to ask you again, sister. What's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who submits to the Creator? Now, I'm yeah. going to interrupt you. Yeah? It's difficult. All your family are not Muslims. You're going to be ostracized. They're going to see it as strange. But the reality of it is, your loyalty should be to the one who created you. Right now, innately, you believe in a Creator. Innately, it's natural because you ask a small child, um, like, where did this all come from? They're gonna say God. Yeah. Oh, they're not gonna say multiple gods. Brother Yusuf. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. Um, okay. I forgot the point I was going to You said you're asking a little child if they believe yeah. in God, they they're not going to say multiple gods. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does that make sense? So th this is natural. 
when you go to parts of the world where it's like they're not even wearing clothes, they're just covering themselves basically, and they're very not with civilization, yeah. but they still believe in a creator. Yeah. On a sinking ship, I used to use the example of planes, but I don't use plane examples no more. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. In a sinking ship, people still worship. I mean, on a sinking ship, there's no atheists. As soon as the sinking mm -hmm. ship, they're going to start believing in God. They're going to start praying to God. Oh God, get me out of this situation. Oh God, help me. I think there's a, atheism is just not natural. So I'm just asking you to testify to something which is innate, which is natural. Because the sister said, um, she didn't say she became Muslim, she said she reverted. Mm -hmm. As in, she came back to Islam because we're all born upon Islam, which is fitrah, which is there's one God. The God deserves to be worshipped. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not multiple gods. Um, our natural inclination to be good. Does that make sense? If I threw something in your face, you're going to cover your face. Yeah. This is natural. This yeah. is fitrah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, so I'm saying to yourself that look. What's stopping you from embracing that natural truth that you know to be true? Don't worship the creation, worship the creator. Because right now, you don't realize it, but you're... Um, are you still in education? Are you working? Uh, no, I'm not in education. Yeah. If you're worshipping something, it's either your, your boss at work, boss at work your boyfriend, money, education, whatever, because uh -huh. it's like you're changing. I'm saying no. Don't be a slave to that. Don't be a slave to your desire. Yeah. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. People become anorexic and go on these fab diets and stuff like that. Why? Because they're slaves to their appearance and how people perceive them. Yeah. And I'm saying, look, don't be a slave to the creation. Be a slave to the creator. Yeah. So my sister, what's stopping you from becoming a Muslim? Okay. Give me a second, okay? Yeah. Um, you can do 50-50 or phone a friend or ask a friend. <laughs> I'm winding you up. Just, no, no, so do. All jokes aside, take a moment. Absorb, think about it. You haven't disagreed with anything I've said. Um, if you permit me, can I go through the five pillars with you? If you want to, yeah, sure, go for it. Yeah? <coughs> There's an extra charge. Everything up to this point was free. Five pillars is going to cost you money. <laughs> <laughs> so now, um, the first pillar of Islam is Shahada, the belief in Allah. Yeah? There's only one God and Allah sent the Prophet Muhammad who we affirm him because the Quran came through him. The Quran is perfect then we believe put our trust in the one the Quran was real to, the Prophet Muhammad. We've got his biography, everything makes sense. So belief in Allah. Yeah? And belief that he sent his final messenger, the Prophet Muhammad. Then it's praying five times a day. Yeah? Now again, it's a personal journey. Yeah. Um, I like to give the example of someone um, robbing a bank. Calm down, my friend. I'm talking. Anyways, um, someone's going to rob a bank. When are they going to rob a bank? They want to commit a major sin. When they're going to get a, When are they going to commit a major sin? You wake up, you pray. In the afternoon, you pray. Midday, you pray. Yeah. Um, in the night, you pray. Before you go to sleep, you pray. I don't get a chance. When am I going to organize my great heist in between my salahs? Yeah? And imagine I do fall into sin and I do rob the bank. I've got another few more chances to repent and ask God for forgiveness. Do you know what I mean? So praying five times a day. I've had people become Muslim as soon as I get to the second pillar. Like, I want that connection with God. Do you know what I mean? I go, calm down, calm down. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but people want that. that look, going to the church once a week is not enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now it's up to you how much time you spend praying. It doesn't take up a long period of your time. Oh, yeah, no, no. I've seen her pray many times. Yeah, mashallah. So now you've got that uh, giving zakat where we eradicate poverty. It's 2.5% of your wealth that you haven't spent in one calendar year. You've deducted your living expenses. Whatever remains, you give 2.5% of it. And we've eradicated poverty. 2.5%, that's one fortieth of your wealth. 
that you haven't spent in one calendar year. We didn't have no more poor people. We was reinvesting in um, other elements in Islam, do you know what I mean? Because there was no more poor people. Who can say, what, what society can say they eradicate poverty? They can't. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, if God exists, why are there poor people? I go, there's poor people because you man's not, um, you're not implementing the law of God. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Even, um, I think there was a article done in regards to, who's the richest man in the world? Bill Gates, is it? No, no, the other guy. Tesla guy. Rich, um, Elon Musk. Oh, yeah, yeah. If he gave 2.5% of his wealth. Oh, goodbye. Yeah, no, no. The world, I forgot, oh, somewhere in the UN or something, they were saying how the World Watch or whatever saying that, look, if he gave 2.5% of his wealth, there would be no more poor people around the world. Wow, Yeah, I know. Does it make sense? 2% uh, of the richest people in the world, one, the top 1% of the richest people have the combined wealth of the world. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. 1%. That's, that's, that's how disproportionate is that? I know. Yeah? Um, the GDP or the 50 poorest countries and this, that. But it's just it, because we've become very selfish and self-absorbed and we're not following the commandments of God, rich is getting richer and the poor is getting poorer. Zakat is a tax for the rich to give to the poor. How do I know if you're eligible for to give zakat? If you can't receive it, you give it. We eradicate poverty. Then it's fasting, the month of Ramadan. If you're not too young, if you're not too old, if you're not ill, if you're not traveling, if you're not on your period. That's how easy Allah has made it. Then fast 30 days. Now science is showing how beneficial it is. I fast because God said so. And now science is saying that it um, is an amazing detox of the body. It kills cancerous cells. We look into it, it's a, it's a miraculous. Um, fasting continuously for 30 days is miraculous. It's very good for the health. Yeah? And the last one is Hajj. It's the holy pilgrimage following the example of going to the Kaaba, which was built by the prophet Abraham, and do the pilgrimage, if you can afford it. If you're not too old, if you're not too young. Islam is based on these five pillars. Do you disagree with any of them? No. She was going to punch you, are you sure? She's, like, she's going to like, <laughs> body yeah, slam no, no, I you. Agree with, I literally agree with everything they were saying. Yeah? <coughs> Anything scare you? No. Not yeah? scary, no. At any point did I say you have to cover your arm? No, you did not. Yeah? <laughs> the five pillars, yeah? This is the fundamentals. If you agree with the fundamentals, you're not going to disagree with anything else. You know what a pillar is, right? It's what keeps it up. This is yeah, the yeah. five pillars of Islam. You learned it in secondary school or primary school. Yeah? So, knowing the five pillars, which inshallah you're going to bring into your life once you become Muslim, what's stopping you now from guaranteeing yourself by the permission of Allah paradise? bringing in a complete way of life which is going to make you happy long term which once you bring into your life once you're practicing it once you um, understand it and start implementing it into your life and you're confident and you built on that knowledge you can spread it to your friends and family do you not want paradise for your friends and family i say to people as soon as you become muslim right your challenge is to pay Make five people around you Muslim by the permission of Allah. And you can do it. I've done one so far. MashaAllah. Oh, Kiana, okay. Does it make sense? Easy peasy. Why? Because there are at least you've got five people who would be susceptible to what you're coming with. Do you know what I mean? And you don't need to invite your family. Let them see how beneficial it is to you. Let them see how it's changed you. Let them see how it's actually uplifted their rights over you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I know a lot of reavers like, I don't want to be nice to my parents. They annoy me. But because Islam says so, I'm going to do it. And their parents respond to the message because they're like, wait, my son never behaved like this before. My daughter my never behaved like this before. Islam is making this 
un this rowdy child into someone actually remotely like palatable. Yeah. So sister, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation? No, I do believe in this conversation. I do. I agree with yeah. everything you Don't believe in this conversation. Believe in Allah. Because <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is, look, you get hit by lightning. Yeah, one yeah? You get hit by lightning. Mm -hmm. Struck by lightning, yeah? And you die. Where are you going to go? What's going to happen? I'm going to go in the ground. I'm not going to know. I'm going to be dead. Like, yeah, I'm not going to know. I'm going to be dead. Yeah. Do you have a soul? I have a soul, yeah. Yeah. Who created the soul? Allah, apparently. No, apparently. Clearly. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. If you believe in a soul, that's nothing tangible. I can't prove to you you have a soul. Yeah. But you believe in a soul. And I'm saying the one who created that soul you believe in, yeah, is going to judge that soul. And that soul does not die. Now, that soul is either going to go heaven or hell. Now, one of the criterias for you to go to heaven, that soul to go to heaven is belief in Allah and follow the commandments. Mm -hmm. Now, you're like, yes, 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 I see the finishing line. In fact, brother, you've convinced me the finishing line exists. Yeah. In fact, you're very close to the finishing line, but you haven't crossed it. Yeah. And then that reason that you haven't crossed it, it's not based on logical reason. Because I'm challenging, I'm welcoming you to question me. But you don't have any questions. Do you have any questions? No. Ask, ask. And there's no, there's no such thing as a silly question. I don't have any, I don't have any questions. Like, I, my mind's actually gone blank. Yeah. Take a moment. I'm going to give you a moment. I have so many things to say, but then yeah. suddenly when I'm here, it's just like everything just goes out of my head. Because the fact of the matter is, by the permission of Allah, yeah. Allah wants you to have this conversation with me. Of course, yeah. you believe that everything is meant to happen for a reason. Oh, and fate? Yeah, well, yeah fate, okay, destiny, yeah. that's one of the articles of faith. In Islam, we believe. Um, it's yeah. a belief in Allah. I do believe that, by the way. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's fate, um, we call it the decree. Good and bad is from Allah. Yeah. Um, belief in angels. Belief in the prophets. Belief in the, um, so I said, belief in Allah and belief in Judgment Day. Yeah, so this is this is all decreed by Allah. Yeah, um, your the sister grabbed you by your elbow. Yeah, but she couldn't drag you against your will. So you wanted there's a part of you at a certain point. I can guarantee you, you're like, oh, Allah, not Allah, but you was looking for guidance. You wanted this conversation. Oh yeah, of course. How do I know? I'm a mind reader. Oh, I do. I do want this conversation. I know. No, no. This conversation, is in, you, you want that connection with God. You're looking for purpose. And Qadr of Allah, by the permission of Allah, you're the, I'm here in Stratford and we're having this conversation and everything I'm saying, you agree to it. So I'm asking you now, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who submits their will to God? Say how it is. Say, say why. Go on. Go on. <laughs> No, I just, it seems like such a big commitment for me personally, I just... What's the commitment? Tell me. You're going to leave, you're going to, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to leave this conversation as a Muslim. Yeah? Then, you're going to read some Qur'an. Yeah? You're going to try your best. Yeah? Then, you're going to think to yourself, Shati, sorry, Muslims pray five times a day. So, you might go, decide to like, wash yourself head to toe. Yeah? Then, you're going to try your best to pray. You don't know how to pray. This is going to show you. Yeah? Then you're going to pray and you're going to like, oh my gosh, what have I been missing out on? Because prayer is the food for the soul. Yeah? And then like, oh my gosh, when's the next time I'm going to do it? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah? And then you're going to look into it more. And then you're going to be like, oh my gosh, if this makes sense to me. I agree to this. Oh, this is why, because you know the Quran, it's got a very short list of things which are forbidden. The Quran says everything which is forbidden. Everything else is permissible. Does, does it make sense? Let me, yeah. To me, that's very beautiful. Allah could have revealed a book saying, all of these things is permissible. It would have been a very big book. I just said, look, avoid this. This is haram. Yeah? For example, 
uh, don't eat dead meat. She saw like a cow don't eat it if it's just dead. Don't kill, don't eat something that's been killed in someone else's name, in the name of another Lord, another creator. Yeah. Um, but then thereafter in Surah chapter 5, uh, Surah Maida, it goes through what's forbidden in regards to what we can't eat. Everything else is permissible. Islam is easy. Yeah? Don't drink alcohol. Yeah? Okay, you fall in, you slip up, you drink, da da da. Because I don't like saying what you can't do. Yeah? yeah. You can drink alcohol but still be a Muslim, knowing that it's wrong. But then you got orange juice and you got milkshake and you got strawberry juice and this, that, whatever, 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 yeah? yeah. Like, why are you going to do something that's going to kill your liver, that causes domestic violence and, and car accidents and so on and so forth? I'm not non Muslims who are passionate, they don't drink. Does it make sense? Um, it leads to like all these kind of um, sexual crimes and X, Y, and Z and so on and so forth. Do you know what I mean? Because we're intoxicated and you have this lowered intervention in ambitions, then leads to other issues. Do you know what I mean? So I'm saying Allah knows what's good for you. Yeah? So it's like, it's easy. Stay away from what's forbidden. Everything else is permissible. Life is good. So, my dear sister, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep asking you this question. We got all night, yeah. You said you're not in a rush. No. What's stopping you <laughs> from leaving this conversation as someone who's a Muslim? Oh no, I just. Oh. Were you, did you say earlier that um, was it? everyone's purpose in life is to become a Muslim? Everyone's purpose in life is um, Allah created um, mankind and jinn kind. Jinn kind is another creation that's unseen, purely to worship Him. That's our purpose in life. Yeah. Now you're thinking about, I always want to be a doctor. You can worship Allah and be a doctor. Yeah, yeah. N d d does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Now, um, can you be a doctor who um, sells people's kidneys and? Because Islam doesn't makes these things forbidden. Does it make sense? So it gives you guidance. So right now that is our purpose. In life. And then what else should we do? It comes with a complete way of life. So and I'm saying that complete that guidance is what we need. Like everything you buy comes with an instruction manual. God created us and gave us bad analogy the instruction manual, which is the Quran, perfectly preserved, perfect guidance, no mistakes in it. So sister, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who submits their will to God? Can I ask you a question? Yes. What made you want to become a Muslim? Because it's the truth. It's, it's all around me. How can I not? Like, how can I say no? Because think it was quick. I became a support. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was quick, yeah. Yeah. Because it's like when you see, the, in the Quran, it makes the argument, right? When you look at the creation, it makes you believe in the creator. Does that make sense? So just look at how Allah made the camels. Camels are like quite miraculous, like um, the way they're designed, like how they're able to retain the water and walk on hot sand. And, yeah. and you think to yourself like, wait, how are we going to say this is random? This is accidental. Even like what I was saying, how like parrots talk and like, we all have different fingertips. Like how? Like, subhanAllah, like how? You know, the sisters talk about fingertips, yeah? Um, the disbelievers came to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, look, once we're dead and we've gone, our bones have turned into dust. How is God going to bring us back to life? Allah revealed verses of the Quran where it says that we're bringing you back to life down to the tips of your fingers. 1400 years ago. We don't know what that means. What's the relevance? Down to the tips of your fingers. Okay, nice. Now we know every single human being, their fingertips is different. The Quran isn't a book of science. It's a book of signs. The signs there for the believers. Yeah. Does that make sense? So take a reflect on it. Then I mean, 
when the Quran is talking about the embryo, yeah, and it describes it and calls it the alika, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's miraculous. Like alika has got three different meanings, yeah. All three of the meanings is applicable and correct. So now, um, something blood clot, something that clings, yeah. And my brain is going blank. Alaka, yeah. The third one, um, leech-like. Now, when you look at a embryo under a microscope, it looks like a leech, yeah. So now that we've discovered um, using microscope how it looks, wow, wait, that verse is a meaning to it, yeah. a profound meaning to it. And then it's like, wait, um, when the Quran talks about the seven or eight stages of embryo, it says in the right order. We just found this out recently. But then even a baby, yeah, what does it do? It's like a leech. At a low level understanding, it's like, wait, um, it's taking the resource of the mother. So, as our knowledge expands, the understanding gets deeper. And even the embryo, like it, um, it initially like a blood clot, and it does cling as well on the... I don't want to go into the science. Yeah. yeah. So, that is one example of how the Qur'an talks about science, because Allah is the creator of everything. Allah knows, created science, created everything. Allah is the master of it. Does it make sense? I've had these conversations with doctors, and I'm talking about Professor Keith Moore and how leading and biological expert. And he goes, well, no, you can't be a doctor without knowing him. He goes, yeah, I'm a doctor and yeah, I had to study him. And he was like saying, it's not possible for anyone to know this. He's a leading biological expert um, without 1400 years ago when, there's no embry uh, when there was no microscope. The Quran must be from God. Does that make sense? So I'm asking you again. It seems like everyone just has like it's not like, like everyone just has that feeling. Like you obviously had that feeling with mm -hmm. Islam, like you felt like this is it, like this is for me. Mm -hmm. But I don't have that feeling, but I agree with everything that you're saying though. Like everything you're saying to me makes sense in my head. How do you know everyone's got that feeling? Right now, the fact that you're not walking away, uh, would you like to drink some baby blood? Some baby, no, no thank you. Why not? Just drink That's it, try disgusting. it. No thank you. So you know you don't want that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm offering you Islam, but you're not you're not rejecting it. You're not saying no to it. I'm happy to learn more about it. That's why I'm here. Yeah, no, 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 no. But the fact of the matter is, it's like, what is your expectation? Like, what do you, you the fact that you don't disagree with it, you want it. You know what you don't want. You didn't want the baby blood. Did you have to think about it? Take a moment. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, yeah, thanks we got some just by the two. Oh, no, no, I'm okay, thank you. Don't worry. Yeah, fresh. Oh, no, I'm good. Freshly squeezed. Oh, yeah, blood. no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. So, so you don't have a adversity towards it. You don't not want it. And I've had situations where, because um, you said there's a lot of commitment. You, you're, you're burdening yourself. You're, you're, you're making it out to be something difficult. And I'm saying, no, it's something easy. It's something that's useful, that's beneficial. So once you do it, like I've had, I've had plenty of people on road when we chat to them who've become Muslim, yeah? Through, through a random conversation. Even today, you know how many people became Muslim today? Wow, really? How many, I'm asking you a question. Six? No, more than that, I'd say. Ten? Football match today, so... Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. I lost some actually. I can't answer because it was actually six. <laughs> really? I was going to yeah. say like 20. Yeah. There's only a few of us. Next. Yeah. I was gonna six, six people today. Oh, my God. Yeah. Practically every single weekend, someone becomes Muslim. That's great. We're here every Saturdays. Yeah. yeah. So, and these are, these are conversations we've directly had. Yeah. They, they woke up something and they left the conversation and someone who submits to God. Yeah. So I'm asking you, sister, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who submits to God? Because I feel like if I was actually supposed to be a Muslim, like, I, would, I would feel like, I would have a feeling, to, I would be feeling like I want to do it. You know, I wouldn't just be like, oh, well, it's whatever, like, I'm fine, happy as I am, you know? Hmm. Okay. Do you want to connect with God? Um... Do you feel like if you continued living your life the way you're living now, yeah? And we started off and you said you're happy. 
Yeah, and I don't, I don't disbelieve you. I think you, you believe you're happy. Yeah. But I'm like, you can be more happy. You, you haven't tasted the sweetness of happiness. You haven't tasted the sweetness of Iman, which is like the faith in God. Does it make sense? Until you pray, yeah, do that salah. And trust me, it's just, it's going to change your life. And I'm saying to you that that feeling that you're expecting, it's not about that feeling. It's about testifying to what you believe. I didn't say, sister, do you, do you feel like being a Muslim? <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? I didn't say, do you feel like, I'm saying, sister, testify to what you believe. I've, by the permission of Allah, I've kind of, I forgot what it's called, like, you know when you're searching for gold? I've kind of found what, I sifted through and found that gold, that iman, that belief, that was already there. Mm -hmm. That got, that, that's got covered up by, Different, different things. I'm saying now that I've sifted through and we found your true belief, which was always innately there, just testify to it. Then at least you can um, enter paradise. Yeah. Do, do you challenge what I'm saying? You don't have to agree with me. If there's nothing to challenge, then shut your mouth and take the shahada. No, <laughs> No, um, what was I going to say? Oh gosh. Um, I don't know. It just, it seems like, it seems like everyone who's become, a, everyone, everyone that I know that's become a Muslim, they all, they all just feel so passionate about it, you know? Mm. But to me, for me, I, I don't, I don't feel passionate about it enough to want to become a Muslim. Shall I tell you why? With all due respect, because you're not learned enough. You haven't looked into it enough. But I'm saying that journey started now. The reason I'm going to put a bit of pressure on you to become Muslim now is I can't guarantee the next five seconds. Of course not. And if you die without being a Muslim, then you're not entering paradise. Yeah. So I'm saying that passion is going to come once you leave, read the Seerah. That passion is going to come when you read the Quran. Yeah? So, and you're like, some people want to do it the other way around. I'm like, look, at least if you leave the conversation as a Muslim, you're motivated. Now there's pressure on you. I'm a Muslim. I need to, like, look into it further. Yeah. Yeah? And I'm guaranteeing you, look, all the journey your friends have been through, that passion came, different people have different motivations. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I like to think, consider my journey to Islam is based on logic and rationale. Some people it's spirituality. Some people it's the guidance. Some people it just innate, it just makes sense to them. But you're different. What's your what's your individual thing? You're you're like, no no no, I wanna be like this sister. This sister was like singing and dancing about it and then she became Muslim. Yeah. And the other one like she was so ecstatic about it. No. You might be doing it just because you don't want to go hell for hell. Because it makes sense. Because it's right. Does it make sense? Yeah, Why are you superimposing their motivation? Like, no, I need to have a similar motivation. You know, different people. You're course, individual. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna make a reference about skin color, but let's not take it there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stuff. Like, I'm just joking. <laughs> we're, we're all different, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, your motivation could be different. So, if you haven't disagreed with it. What you got to lose? Complete way of life, hellfire. Which one should I do? Paradise or hellfire? <laughs> Obedience to the one who's created me, who sent evidence through a perfect book, yeah? or living a subjective life to whatever I think is right. You know, in China, they have stillborn babies. Stillborn babies? Yeah. yeah. You can go into a restaurant and have a stillborn baby. Wait, what? What? Cannibalism, yeah. What China. do you mean? Like they eat they eat them. Huh? Wait, babies. Stillborn babies. What? So they're babies? They're real babies. Little fingers. Huh? Wait. Google it. What? What? It's a, it's a specialism. It's a specialist dish in restaurants. You literally it's go really in there. Specialist dish. Get out of here. Yeah. What? But what? Why? What's wrong with it? That's disgusting. Why would they why? do that? Different societies have different moral wow. codes. Does that make sense? I can say that's wrong. 
I can say that's haram because Allah said so. Mm -hmm. We can't we can't commit um, what's the word? Um, cannibalism. So, but you can't. You don't you don't have a system. You can't say that's disgusting. It's disgusting now when you go to China and you live there. It's like no, it's fine. It's normal. Does that make sense? In China, there's manga cartoons that depicts violence towards children and child pornography and just pornography but it's like it's okay it's just a cartoon i'm like no it's haram it's forbidden because yeah. allah said so it doesn't matter if it's a cartoon do you know what i mean do it the right way so i'm asking you sister yeah? what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who's got the keys to paradise you have the right belief um, you don't disagree with the five pillars um, you don't disagree with the Prophet Muhammad? Yeah. Do you believe he's a messenger sent by God? Sorry? Do you believe he's a messenger sent by God? Who? The Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Sister, you're a Muslim. All right? Shut your mouth. All right? That's it. <laughs> Halas! Finished. <laughs> now, God. So, you believe in the Creator. You believe in the Prophet Muhammad. You believe in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you believe in the lifestyle. You agree with the five pillars. Mm -hmm. What's stopping you from testifying to that in Arabic and then saying in English and being guaranteed paradise? As long as you die upon this belief. I just and then the actions later, step by step. And you've got friends and family who will guide you. I don't know, I just... I like my life the way it is. Okay, what do you like about it? What's Islam going to change? It's going to take out the haram. Yeah, it's going to take out the haram and... Uh... So what haram? I don't want you to like, expose your sins or anything like that. There's nothing that you're going to stop doing which is good for you. Yeah? And it's going to show you a way of doing it in a better way. Yeah? I can go around fornicating. Yeah? Get all these transmitted diseases and so on and so forth. Or I can do it in wedlock. More responsibility for me. Um, but long-term happiness. When you revert, do all your previous sins get wiped away? Wiped away, clean. Really? So you could just, I could murder someone and revert? Ideally, yeah. Damn. But I would suggest murder, um, revert first, murder then, then do Tawan. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> then, you don't know, a struggle might kick off. No, no, the fact of the matter is, right? Um, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, you. when you commit a major sin, yeah, there's still that God consciousness, there's still that repentance, there's still that thing, that connection with God. And I think once you become Muslim or you have that connection with God, you're not going to want to commit murder and so on and so forth. So, yeah, so there's, there's research shown, right, where you have men, um, maybe this isn't applicable for you because I'm not good with chatting to women, right? Mostly I chat to the man then. Who have multiple partners going to, yeah, throughout their life. And then they go home to the same woman. They're actually more fulfilled, more happier when they're going home to the same woman. Of course, one good girl is worth a thousand women. Yeah, so now. But then most mandem, most mandem don't realize this, they don't know this. Does it make sense? <laughs> Yeah. So they want to live a certain lifestyle and then they realize that, look, wait, um, that, that lifestyle that's legislated by God is actually making me more fulfilled, more happy. So I want to know, without being graphic, there's, there might be young children watching at home. <laughs> yeah. what, 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 what changes? What, what is it that, that's so good, that's so beneficial that you don't want to live? And you don't necessarily have to leave it right now, today. It's, it's a journey, but long term, I suggest yeah, it will make you happier. I know this one brother, he became Muslim, yeah? he left his girlfriend yeah? and then he got um, chat to one of his mates who became Muslim, they end up getting married, they got kids, he's in Medina studying, life is good. Not easy. It's that easy sister, it's that easy, yeah? by the permission of Allah. Yeah? Yeah? I know one brother, he became Muslim and he was doing like bare stuff haram that he didn't even know was haram and then later on that literally I hand out is through his DAO organization, Abdul Rahim Green. Yeah? And it's like, it was like six months, he's just living his life and he didn't realize like we're meant to be a Muslim, but he's still a Muslim because he just felt like there must be more to life than 
studying, getting a job, working, getting paid, dying, and getting that, your children into that habit, and the cycle continues. So I'm asking you, sister, what, what is it? And I'll give you a good reason why you should stop and how Islam will benefit you. And it's not, it's not about stopping right now. Again, I don't want to say, that's harm, that's harm, leave this, leave it. I'm saying, look, increase the good. Connect with God, connect with Allah, read the perfect guidance. And then automatically you're going to shed these bad habits, which you may not necessarily perceive it to be bad habits. Yeah. So sister, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as a it's too much for me to do right now, like right here, right now. I, I, could, I couldn't do it right now. I'd have to talk to my mom. I'd have to like research it more on my own. You Hold know? up. Okay, time. We have to go. All right. With the cameras now. All right. What's your mom gonna say that is gonna make you change your mind? If your mom said this is wrong, don't do it. Are you gonna not be a Muslim? Oh no, of course not. I'm not gonna listen. I'm, no, I'm just gonna. I just then what's the point? Habibi, may Allah bless you, bro. Salam rakato. Yeah. I want to hear what she has to say. Yeah. So she can say what she's gonna say, and that's fine. Because the fact of the matter is, I'm not forcing you to say something you innately believe that's not in your heart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're just affirming what you believe. Now, she tells you to stop believing. If she tells you now to start worshiping a statue, are you gonna do it? Why not? What, what do you mean? Why am I gonna? What am I worshiping the statue for? What good is statue gonna bring me? There you go. So I'm not telling you you're an adult. I'm not telling you not to consult with your mom. But I'm saying testify to what you already believe. Now, if there's something that Islam teaches you, um, like I would say, like before you get married, yeah, consult your mom, your dad. Does it make sense? That's good to have that discussion with them, yeah? But when it comes to something which is natural, there's no difference of opinion. Does it make sense? Yeah. It's always good to do shura, get group consultation, discuss with people. But when there's something you innately believe in, yeah, it's like, yeah, is this man good for me or is this a toxic relationship? That's fine. Is there a God? Uh, of course. Should we worship the Creator? Of course. Should we not worship, believe, not worship the creation? Yeah, of course. But what, what about people that are happy that, that aren't a Muslim? Are they just being, are they fake happy then? They are fake happy, yeah. Damn, <laughs> all these celebs, that's crazy. Fam, let me tell you, why are rich people committing suicide? Bare celebrities commit suicide. Rich people commit suicide. Why are rich people on antidepressants? Damn, but I believe that money buys happiness. Yeah? Then I want to shop where you shop. Show me the shop where it sells happiness. <laughs> yeah? The fact of the matter is, rich people testify to the fact that money doesn't buy you happiness. You know the statement you made is a poor person's statement. Yeah? Because, because when you don't have money, you think money is going to buy me happiness. Yeah? When you don't have money, you think money is going to buy me happiness. Once you have money and you've lived the life and you realize there's still a void in my heart, then you're going to commit suicide. Because <laughs> it's like, no, that's it, I've got nothing. That's it. Does that make sense? I've done charity work, I've gone to people living in tents. I can hear them reciting Quran. I've come in donating food. They're like, oh wait, let me put my hijab on. I'm, I'm here to give them food. They're like, oh, join me. I've made food. They're offering me food. The fact of the matter is, you can't buy happiness. Yeah? Islam teaches you to be grateful for what you have. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fall down the stairs, I break my leg. Alhamdulillah, I didn't break my neck. Yeah, you're still alive, you're still living. Does, does it make sense? Yeah. So, appreciating what you have. So I'm saying to you now, yeah, fake happy, people don't know what happiness is. You know children abroad, they're working in sweatshops. Yeah, Nike, you know who you are. Nike shops, the child labor. My man's walking around thinking, I'm a baller. I got a job. Yeah. I'm working 14 hours, getting paid 12p. Yeah. Everyone's jealous of me. I'm a baller, working in dark conditions. He, he's happy. I'm saying, take off the shackles of this life, come out of this 
cage created by society. Does make sense? Women wearing high heels. Walk one. That's so uncomfortable. Damaging your feet. Yeah. Yeah. Salam alaikum. I hope the sister will become Muslim as well. Yeah, make that, make that. Soon, let's see, hours. let's see. Many people have accepted Islam after you, you know. You guys are still here. <laughs> ah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. Take care. Um, yeah, do, 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 do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's why these celebrities, and you've seen how many exposing that, like, oh, they're living on, what's it called? Fake accounts, and they're acting like they're happy, but they're actually going through depression. They're going through depression and they're just portraying and later on they're like, yeah, I had to do this for my followers yeah. and all. So it is fake happiness. Yeah. So people who are really happy are the ones who are submitting the will, the will to the creator. So I'm going to ask you again, sister. What's preventing you from submitting your will to the creator? And by the way, ask questions, it's fine. If they need to go, they're going to go. I'm gonna, I've got time to pray my girl, I can sure? run to the mosque, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So go on, there's no pressure, don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just the fact that I know it's a lifelong commitment. Like it sounds, I, I feel like that will make it's you making happy. me sound lazy, but I'm not lazy, but I don't no, know. No, 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 Shati, don't, it's not loaded, it's fine. Yeah, the fact of the matter, it's a lifelong commitment for your happiness. Yeah? That's gonna make you happy. Yeah. So, if there's something in Islam that made you unhappy, you didn't want to do, then that's different. It's a lifelong commitment of a lifestyle which is complete, which is fulfilling you. Yeah. And again, you're going into the actions. At the moment, I want you to affirm the belief in the heart. Actions come later. No pressure. A little bit of pressure, no pressure, no joking. Because the fact of the matter is, why delay the good? If you disagreed with me and you're like, I don't want to become Muslim, um, I, need, no, I need to be convinced. Like, I'm not, no. It's like, I agree with it, but I want more time to think about it. Think about what, the stuff you already agree with. I want to speak to my mum back. Okay, that's fine. And even if she tells me, disagrees with me, it's right, I'm still going to do it. But I just want to, Discuss it with her. Like, it's not making a lot of sense. Yeah. And the reason I'm putting a little bit of pressure on you is because I can't guarantee um, what your state's going to be when you're crossing the road. Of course not. Yeah? So then at least it's about testifying to something you already believe. Then that passion will come through independent research. Yeah? If, you, if there's something fundamentally you disagree with, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Come look into this, do that, do this, stand up. I don't know, it's just like I agree with everything you're saying, but I don't feel like I want to become a Muslim. No offense. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah? But then you don't even disagree with the pillars. Because you're, you're talking about there, there has to be a feeling. I'm like, sometimes um, we do stuff where it's like for our long term longevity and long term happiness. Does that make sense? So I'm like, look, um, not every day is going to be a song and a dance. Of course not, yeah. Yeah. But every day it's like, it's taking you to the end goal where you're working towards something, reaching your purpose, which is paradise. Yeah. Now, God exists. There's too much design for there not to be a designer. For a perfect scripture, it articulates that there's a certain do's and don'ts for us to enter paradise. And you're like, yeah. Because I'm like, you're happy now. Mm -hmm. How much more happy would you be if you followed the commandments by the one sent by the, the Lord of the world? The universe. I don't know. Wouldn't you say more happy? So, what's preventing you from starting the journey? Because you could leave the conversation saying that, yeah, everything, everything he said makes sense. But then I'm saying that, like, do something about it. I don't, it's not like, oh my gosh, I want you to say the Shahada and go about it. No, I'm saying, say the Shahada, let it change your life. Say the Shahada, bring it into your life. Say the Shahada, get the keys to paradise and then take proactive steps. Wait, so if I say the Shahada here now, I miss them? Yes. I don't have to go to a mosque like you did? No. 
Then how come you and Tom Moskin did it? Because she wanted so, to. Yeah, he's getting up. Fair enough. Yeah. You don't even need witnesses, yeah? Even though there's all a few witnesses and cameras, yeah? The fact of the matter is, it's the testimony, it's the belief in the heart. Mm -hmm. You say in Arabic, which is, um, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is a servant and messenger sent by God. That testimony alone is sufficient, it's that sufficient belief. Yeah, because the belief in the heart which you have. Now I need you to testify with the tongue and then implement it with actions of your limbs. Now if you don't get a chance and get hit by the bus. That testimony of the tongue is sufficient for you to enter paradise. Because the belief in the heart is like, you've got the belief, but what's stopping you from saying it? And I'm trying to take, take these obstacles out of the way. And it seems like there's nothing. It's just procrastination. I've had people, wallahi, yeah, I've had people who are like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to become Muslim. I'm going to look into it. They come up, I've read the whole Quran. Muslim yet? Not yet. I've read hadith. I've gone through all the different lives of the Prophet. I go, what's stopping you? They're like, I want to read more, study more, study more what? And then they end up becoming Muslim. Because sometimes it's ourselves, we're procrastinating. We're delaying the khayr, we're delaying the good. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, it's nothing foreign. Whatever you believe, testify to it, then implement Islam into your life on a day-to-day -day basis, as much as you can. You're scared of it, but wallahi, look, it's on camera. Yeah, I'm going to prophesy now, yeah, I will be Yeah. Yeah. Um, once you say the Shahada, you're going to be so grateful to me. I wouldn't be so grateful to you. Yeah, you're going to be like, I'm, I'm so glad. And if it's not directly in conversation, once you get home, you're going to message the sister, you're going to be like, I'm so glad. This, right now, just fear of the unknown. But again, no one's ever said the Shahada for great day. Do you know what I mean? I had a sister approach me today. She's like, she wants to become Muslim. That's why I'm like, okay, that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I go to, a, you can watch the video, uh, it's going to be put up on our sleep thing. There's two ladies to each other. I go, why? She couldn't actually articulate why. Just, just because I want to become Muslim. Something just, she, did, she didn't give me an ontological and deep philosophical answer. Because I want to become Muslim. It just makes sense. Yeah. I said, why? It just makes sense. And with yourself, it doesn't need to be that reasoning. It could just be, I haven't disagreed with what you said. I want paradise. The, just the fear of not going hellfire is it, a, a problem. Is a problematic problem. Yeah. Problem. So, pro pro with the probability of Islam, like I want to be on the right side. So, sister, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as somebody um, who testifies to what they believe? Like the sister said, you don't. Have you chose to do it in the mosque yeah. yeah if you do it now you can do it again in the mosque uh, i'm just I'm, look i'm not pressuring you i'm just curious you haven't given me like yeah, a reason. i know i haven't i know i i'm trying to like think think sister <laughs> help her man come on help her out give her oh, a reason do you know what i mean yeah. any ideas she, 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 she got she got she's lost she's, she can't give you any reason it's why not like, to become a muslim i don't know how to explain it explain what Oh, but yeah, okay. yeah I don't know. Can, all right, do this. Say, Aoud Billah, him in a shaitan in Huh? Okay. I seek refuge from the shaitan because sometimes there's satanic whispers. Can you say a bit slower, please? Aoudu, Aoudu, Billah, Billah, Mina shaitan in Rajin, Mina shaitan in Rajin, Mina shaitan in Rajin. Yeah, just say, look, Allah, guide me towards truth. Allah, like this whispers of the shaitan because the fact of the matter is. It's just satanic. What's preventing you? Yeah? No, just take a moment, get that clarity of thought. Because Islam, you're just delaying the goodness. Do you know what I mean? A complete way of life that's going to make you happy. Damn. Go on, think out, say, mention what you're thinking. I feel like I'm going to cry. Why? I don't know. Go on. I'm not, this is getting in trouble, I'm getting in trouble like, why I'm about to no. making you cry. No, it's not you, don't worry. Uh, apologies, I didn't realise how close to you I was standing. <laughs> Wait, come this way, Asia. 
So start, no, 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 no pressure, go on. It's your decision, yeah? I'm just giving you time, there's no rush. Like I said, these mans, they can stop recording and go. Once you get sick and tired of me, then I'll leave as well, yeah? I don't know, I don't know what's stopping me from doing it. Like, I just, I just feel like I can't do it. I, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what's stopping me. I wish I knew, yeah. I wish I knew. I really don't know what else to say. Yeah? Okay. That guy just dropped his phone. Yep, and it broke. Same up here. Yeah. So I'm gonna um, ask you the final time. I don't yeah. have an answer for you. I'm really sorry. I wish yeah. I had an answer for you. Would you like to leave this conversation as a Muslim? No. no. Oh, do your research. You've got the sister there. I'm going to give you a number if you yeah. like. Yeah. She can get in touch with you. How are you feeling? And by the way, huh? I don't know. It's fine. Um, can you take the, edit out this part? Why? Yeah, yeah, they'll do whatever they want to do. I'm going to start talking in a minute. Okay, I'll wait till the camera's on. No, no, say it, say it. No, no, say I don't say in front of the camera. I'll yeah. wait till after. I talk, oh, no, it's nothing, about, it's nothing like this. No, I'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, do you want to ever be Muslim? See, look, the numbers are already late because I've been giving it to plenty of other sisters. Give one second, okay? Yeah, you can look at it. It's not from Bramit. It's a sister. She's a Reva herself. Uh, four years before she became. Four years. Oh, oh. wow, she's calling. She's calling. Four years before. Um, she got married, she became Muslim. Oh, wow. Ooh, it's my missus. <laughs> she doesn't like me talking about it. She's like, she wants to be like in private stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That was part of one. Named after um, Abraham's wife, okay. Sarah. Oh. Yeah. What was she? Um, two and a bit. Oh. Of, a, of a biblical family. So my elder son is called Musa. I mean, Isa. And my youngest son is called Musa. Musa. So I got Isa and Musa. Oh, I love the name Isa. Um, yeah, go on. Sister was asking you a question. Yeah, yeah sorry. As, would you ever become Muslim? Would you. So, see, have it all. Of course, yeah. Um, would you want to? Even if you, would you ever want to? I think she wants to, but the prevention is correct me if I'm wrong, is should I become Muslim now? Because it's not and like it's I like don't want to be Muslim. Everything. It's scary, it's yeah, a new journey. Course, yeah. Everything. Okay, yeah. Okay. You want tissue? Oh no, don't say that because then I'll start crying. <laughs> cry, I want you to cry. Yeah. Cry. Thank you. Because you're tissue. already going to cry. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts before I let you go? Why are you going to cry for? I don't know because Islam is something that makes you cry. Love. You can love your heart. You're going to be crying. <laughs> I'm going to need tissue next. There's no more tissues. <laughs> Is there any questions before I let you go? <laughs> Sorry. What are, you, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? I'm just. I don't know. I want to know why I'm crying. I'm not sad. <laughs> so why am I crying? You've got no questions. There's nothing stopping you. Any? No. You know we're gonna put this in the thumbnail now. Not yeah. yeah <laughs> No, you shouldn't. Woman tears up. <laughs> Woman tears up. Talk about Islam. <laughs> so, like, I'm gonna join you. I'm gonna be like, no, he's crying as well. Yeah. Bro, he's crying. Yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone's crying. Everyone's crying. <laughs>
not yet. Yeah. Inshallah, next week. Yeah. Well, we're here every Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's no. Yeah, no, no, no. The conversation. We we, we finished the conversation anyways. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Now yeah, I feel emotional now. Yeah. But on a positive now, look, Alhamdulillah, it was a good conversation. I appreciate your time. Um, we're glad. Bro, I'm going to speak to you in a moment. Yeah, um, yeah no, Jazakallah Khair, sister, for your time. I appreciate uh, the conversation. Um, I'm glad that we were able to have this dialogue. I actually feel honored that I was able to kind of share the information and answer your questions thank you so much you explained everything so well yeah and so forgive me if help. like i put pressure on you or offended no, you in any way no. yeah and like i said it's an open door um you've got the sister you've got the number yeah. keep in touch with the people and just be proactive and it's at your own pace from there okay I guess well, the Qurans have gone, haven't they? Huh? The Qurans have gone, haven't they? Oh, yeah, they have, yeah. That's why I came you here for forget? originally. Yeah. Oh, no. I go on in the beginning. No, because oh. I, I came straight to you. Oh, my next apologies. Week, oh, yeah, uh, it's fine. Are you here next Saturday? I can be. I can be. Yeah, and you can even go to Quran.com. My granddad's birthday. <laughs> following Saturday, inshallah. The yeah. following, following Saturdays, you guys come down and I'll have a Quran for you. And yeah, for the time being, you can go to Quran.com. So it's online. You can read on your phone. English version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Quran.com and you could get different translators so um do they have like audio books of it yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 like on podcasts you can go through a the english translation of it or even the recitation of it you know what i mean but just for your information musin khan i think he does a really comprehensive easy to understand translation uh, this is what it looks like, Quran.com. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. It's actually very handy. Yeah. So the one I do is Muslim Khan, Dr. Muslim Khan. And I mean, I like to have both of the translations, but that's okay. me because I'm special. <laughs> yeah. Jazakallah yeah. khair, sister, for your patience. And yeah, may Allah bless you guys because the fact of the matter is, look, she wishes good for you. That's why she's able to give this time and she like drag you by the elbow. <laughs> you know what I mean? So associate yourself with good company the prophet sallallahu said you're upon the religion of the company you keep so in the sense that um the company you keep is very important you know what i mean so if you're with someone who's hedonistic and living sinful who has no moral code you're gonna naturally adopt it you know what i mean so she's a good sister inshallah and yeah i'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna let you go okay, to start. Can I ask you a question now okay is it, is it finished yeah we're done we're done we're okay, done cool. we're not done really go on <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, like, is, it, is what yeah. I'm saying? No, no, so, okay. yeah, yeah, sister, I'm going to leave it to you, yeah? We're here next Saturdays, and to be continued. Perfect. Can I yeah. ease up on what you're going to ask? No, I want to ask you. Oh, oh, I yeah, yeah, you. yeah, go Just for it. privately, in front of, not yeah. in front of all the men. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 oh I will say sister, just one more thing sister, right? If you know deep down that Islam is true, that there is none worth to be worshipped in truth except Allah and Muhammad peace be upon the Messenger of Allah, you take that Shahada, if you die upon that state, you're not God forbid something happens to you yeah. with a car crash, you know you go to paradise. But now, if you know deep down that Islam is true and you don't take the Shahada and Allah takes your soul away, what excuse can you give in front of your Lord? You know, your mother, your father, your friends will not be with you in the grave. Mm -hmm. How many people left home and they don't come back? This is the. So, no, I'm gonna cry. Uh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> look, the thing is this: you know deep down the Islam is true, but you know the testification, the declaration of your faith, that will take you to paradise. If Allah decides to take your soul away, God forbid, you know something happens to you—a car accident, a life change. You know, in that state, you go to paradise. But if you leave. From here from Stratford station and if Allah decides to take your soul away you didn't take the Shahada what excuse can you give in front of your Lord you know you're gonna be alone in the grave there's paradise there's hellfire now the proof is upon you now you know deep down Islam I understand if you still have some doubts you have some questions but I know deep down you know Islam is true your mother your father will not be with you in the grave the only thing that counts in the grave is your deeds, your faith. You know the currency? Money, 
pounds, dollars, that's that's not that's not yeah. counted. You know your deeds, your faith, your uh, your utterance of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Sallallahu that will take you to eternal paradise. What does that mean, by the way? Sorry, uh, what you just said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad. There is none worthy to be worshipped in truth except Allah, the Creator, the Provider, Maintainer of all creation. And then you say Muhammad is, is the Messenger of Allah. If you if you say that statement, yeah. If you leave it right, if you leave Stratford Station upon that statement, Allah takes your soul away, you're guaranteed paradise. Wait, if you say that statement, you're a Muslim? Yes. That's it. Okay. Yeah, we've said this, I've discussed this with you, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you that's the testimony. About this. You have to think about this, uh, madam, yeah? You know, there's an afterlife, there's hereafter. You know, as Muslims, we have to be honest with you. We give you good news, but we also give you warning. The good news is that if you accept Islam, you know, you're, you're, you go to paradise. But we're also here to warn you about the hereafter, that there is eternal hell. Yeah. That if you know deep down Islam is true, you don't take your shahada, you got no excuse. Now that the, the proof has been established against you. You know, Brother Ridwan, may Allah bless him. You know, he's, he's explained to you about Islam yeah. from, the, from, the, from, you know, from the bare bones, right? Is there any issues that you have about Islam? Any doubts? You know, one thing I'll, I, I, one thing I'll tell you before I let you go, is that follow the truth. Yeah, follow the truth. If, if there is one God who deserves to be worshipped, there is no partners with him. If Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, then do you not think that paradise is true? Do you not think hell, hell is true? If the Prophet Muhammad, if you believe Prophet, Prophet Muhammad peace point, is the so messenger of Allah, then rationally speaking, if he's telling you that paradise exists, hell exists, it must be true. Yeah. So think about your afterlife. If I was to ask you, you know, if you have 10 minutes to, to chase 2 million pounds, you would do anything to chase that 2 million pounds. But we're talking about eternal paradise. Why aren't you chasing after that? What's stopping you? But I feel like... Um, there's, no, there's no compulsion. Allah says, La ikra There is no compulsion in religion. But however, I feel like the, the, the proof is now against you. So imagine you're going to stand in the court of Allah, in the court of your, your Lord, on the day of judgment. What, what excuse can you give in front of Allah? You can't. So you should take your shahada. Did you attend? Did you like take your shahada? Not right now. Okay, no problem. No problem. May Allah, you know, may Allah give you tawfiq, may Allah guide you. But do not, do not procrastinate. If, if you know deep down Islam is true, take your shahada as soon as possible. But now... Right now. Um, because I feel like it's, I don't, I, I just don't feel ready to do it right now. Okay, no problem. No problem. You know, your, your, your mother is not going to be with you in the grave. Your father is not going to be with you in the grave. Your friend here is not going to be with you in the grave. You're going to be alone. And Allah will ask you three questions. Allah will ask you, who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who is your prophet? If you can't answer any of these three questions, you know, that you've got to be scared. You know, I'm, there is an afterlife. You know, deep down Islam is true. Do not procrastinate. Do not delay. Because there's no guarantee that you, you will come out here alive. So, you should I'm take gonna a be shahada. honest with you. But, right? but from, from, from the conversation, right? I think she's expecting. So I don't even know your name. Alicia. Sister Alicia, Alicia um, nice Ridwan. Alicia is saying that look, she's kind of expecting this 
overwhelming emotional feeling. And I said to them, look, that's other people. Just because you've seen other people in your life, you've had this feeling, this emotion. It doesn't mean that you need to have that feeling and emotion. You just need to say out loud what you believe in your heart. But, but she's like, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. What, what's the sake of sake of what? Like, cause the just, sake that is true, sake that you believe in it. Because yeah. I'm saying, testify exactly. to what you believe. If you don't believe in it, don't say it. Yeah. If you disagree, because we've had a conversation and said, I've asked you this, you're okay with it. You agree with this, you agree with that. So I'm like, but your expectation is like, is unrealistic. Realistic, like the fact of the matter is, to be a Muslim mm -hmm. is someone to testify to what you already believe. Does that make sense? The brother speaking, and it wasn't like, there was, you've actually become more passionate. From the moments we've spoken, where it's like a bit, yeah, you're agreeing, you're agreeing. Him, you're like, no, no, that's what I believe. This is what you believe. Yeah. So you're affirming everything with more conviction, more um, passion from the beginning of the conversation to now. And again, I don't want to make it cringe or awkward for you, but the thing is, I respect your decision, but there's no reasoning for the decision apart right. from, and you've affirmed this, yeah. that um, I don't want to. Why? What, what, what do you need? What's your criteria for you to testify to what you believe now? You don't even know that. We don't so want, we don't then want, you can procrastinate. Yeah. Sorry, brother. Exactly. Then you can procrastinate because you haven't actually put a limit to, okay, this is what I need. Because my point is, look, read the whole Quran. Then at least you've got, make a smart plan that look, this, once it meets these criteria, because uh, the, even you, mom, you mentioned, I'm a good listener, yeah? You mentioned, I'm going to speak to my mom. But then, even if your mom disagrees, it's not going to influence you. So then, that's a non-point. Because you said it yourself. So then I'm thinking to myself, okay, what is it? So you need to think to yourself, okay, this is what I need. But well, otherwise, you could leave the conversation and five years down the line, Allah willing, if Allah extends your life for that long, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I don't know, I still haven't got a reason. Because if you said, okay, this is my tick box, the minimum we could leave with a tick box, like this is what I want and this and this, and then I'll become Muslim, then that's fine. But it's like, at the moment, it's like you're waiting for that feeling. You can't even describe the feeling. You don't even know what that feeling is. You're not that sister. You can't have the same passion that she had. The other sister who reverted near you, you're not her, you're not going to have that same passion, same emotion. So at the moment, what is the testimony is that saying in Arabic what you believe in your heart, that there's only one God worthy of worship. Yeah? And sent his messenger, the Prophet Muhammad, Khalas, Sallallahu And you've already agreed with this. Does it make sense? You already affirmed um, the belief in God, the revelation of the Quran, the meaning of like the fact that God will send prophets and messengers. I mean, this, and you have already agreed to the final message of the Prophet Muhammad. You know what I mean? Because you haven't disagreed with any of his teachings. So it's like, yeah. But anyways, sister, fundamentally, like the brother said, um, I'm actually, I actually got more worried after I heard the brother speak. I'm actually worried for you now because it's, a t it's, it's, it's against you now because you know before you could have said I didn't know the message didn't come to me exactly. does it make sense now the message has come to you and you're of sound mind you have intellect and you're procrastinating and the brother made a very very fascinating point that's like what is that that's preventing you there's some sort of illness in the heart there's some sort of arrogance there's some sort of oh I don't want to leave this bad habit or I don't want to obey the commandments of God. Do you know what I mean? So, and I'm saying that there's nothing in your life which you need to leave immediately or that's good for you, which you're going to leave. You're not going to regret it. And we're not even talking about leaving stuff. I'm talking about, look, testify to what you believe and then taking proactive steps to increase the passion. Because you haven't read the Quran, but once you've read the Quran, it's going to blow your mind. Once you read about the Prophet Muhammad, and his Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his biography, you're going to be like, look, this is a messenger. Like, you're going to affirm your belief as him sent by God more so. And so, Rafi, you want to say something? No, no, no. no. I mean, you said everything that I wanted to say, but you know, now, but now, like, now you have to think about yourself. Like, look, you've analyzed, for example, you have a product, you're trying to search for a good phone, right? You did all of your due diligence. And then you make a decision, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now you have to make a decision about your afterlife. Are you? Would you rather choose to accept the truth that will take you to paradise, or would you reject the truth and go to hellfire? That is your choice. But there's no force. It's up to you. But now the proof is, that, as, as the brother said correctly, you know, Allah says the Quran, we do not punish a nation until we send a messenger. Meaning that once the message is conveyed to you, and you know black and white clear that Islam is true, there's no excuse. How, feel, how do you feel about this new information that's been given to you? How do you feel about what we've said? Now just in this, this last part in totality, like the point, and even when the brother was saying about the boat, does it make sense? Like, yeah. when something good comes to you and you haven't negated that it's good for you, Islam is good for you, but you're, you're letting it kind of leave you. Yeah. But, well, yeah. we're not scared for you. We're actually scared for you now. Because I'm, we're scared now that if you don't take your Shahada, mm -hmm. Allah, would not, Allah will make us testify against you. What does that mean for you guys? It means that, you know, because when you don't take your Shahada, even though you know the truth and you die upon that state, Allah will ask you, didn't Brother Bidwan, didn't he come to you? Didn't he convey the message of Islam to you? And you know Islam is deep truth? You said yes. Allah said, why didn't you accept it? What excuse can you give? He will testify against you. And you don't want this. You want him to witness for you, not against you. Does that make sense? As in goodness, yeah. to say, yeah, say goodness. Because look, he's not getting paid. Do you get paid? No, no. You don't get paid. And there are many, many brothers and sisters that accepted Islam under him. Yeah? Because they, 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 they recognize the truth and they accept it. Now obviously you're gonna go you're gonna through tests and trials. That's part of life. Allah says, you know, this life is a test for the hereafter. Allah will test you good and bad. But but Allah has given you the decision. Look, you, you want to choose to go to paradise, you'll accept the truth. You want to choose to go to hellfire, you reject the truth. It's up to you. What I'm doing right now, I'm I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to give you a dose of reality. This life is not the only reality. The reality is there's hereafter. So, you know, be conscious of what decision? Would you rather go to paradise, eternal paradise? Or would you rather to go to eternal hellfire? We would love you to go to paradise. We don't want you to go to hellfire. I love what the brother is saying. It sounds like, oh, um, he's talking about me going hellfire. The fact of the matter is, it's not if you don't take the shahada, you're going to go to hellfire. The fact of the matter is, you don't have the belief to go paradise. Your belief exactly. is going to lead you to hellfire. Exactly. Does that make sense? Your yeah. lack of belief. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the lack of belief is going to lead you to hellfire. So now, the only way to prevent yourself from going to hellfire is to testify to what you believe. Because it's not like, oh, the brother, it's like, you could leave the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's fine. But then, like we've discussed previously, it just means that, look, if you die upon that, you've, you can't say that, Look, Ya Allah, I, I saw the finishing line, I agreed with everything. But then, why didn't you just testify to what you believe? And there's something preventing you. And I said, I tried to make excuses and said, oh, it's satanic. But it might be like nafs, it might be something like internal in like regards to yourself. Does it make sense? Because I don't even think there's like a sin or anything that's preventing you. But, again, sister, forgive us if we've gone into like, taking up a lot of your time yes, yes. and you was true to your word you're like you got a lot of time yeah. which you do yeah which is good mashallah time in the world. Um, but we need to actually be conscious that look you leave this conversation and if Allah doesn't extend your life and something happens to you then you had the opportunity the message came to you and then you left it and then we, you're going to be questioning about because that you know, I mean. because you know the, because you know there are many there are many uh, there are many disbelievers they come here they listen he gives that away like he, he invites people to Islam yeah. but you know for sure that look they still need to do their own research but you're different because when he spoke to you you agreed everything that he said mm -hmm. so there is no excuse to you now but other people may have excuse because they never heard Islam before and he just gave that word to them. I said, look, maybe I'll research. Yeah. But I don't think you need to research anything further to know whether it sounds true or not. No, she knows it's true. It's just, she knows it's true, she can't true. testify to it. That's, yeah. a, that's the only no thing. Worries. No worries. May Allah guide yeah. you. you know? May Allah guide you to the truth. 
Um, I mean. But yeah, just have a think. And mashallah, you know, the brother oh, wants yeah. what's good for you and the sister here. Yeah. Keep asking the Creator. You don't want to tell him Allah. You don't want to tell him. Keep asking the Creator. Like the Prophet Muhammad SAW teach us. Ask, show me the truth. He's truthful and he'll be alone. Show me the false and false and he'll be away from it. Keep doing this lie. Yeah. Because it's Allah who guides. Our job is only to convey the message. Yeah. But guidance is in the hands of Allah. So if Allah wants to guide you, He'll guide you. If Allah doesn't want to guide you, then no one can, can, can guide you. Yeah. So because the guidance has only come from a willing from yourself yeah, yeah, that you want the guidance. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Wow. And to you guys, have a good evening. What was the question you want to ask? Oh, oh, oh sorry. I Shall I give the mics back? Yeah, yeah, please, yeah.